Flocky is moving into a new doghouse. He has packed some of his belongings into a box and starts to carry them over to his new home. Having to carry a lot of boxes, he wishes for some kind of special box having a finite surface area but an infinite volume that can be stored within. This special box could hold all of his belongings simultaneously, this way he would have to carry his special box only once in order to move all of his stuff. Rex, overhearing Flocky's wish, notes that an opposite shape would be very impractical. A box having an infinite surface area but only a finite volume would be amongst the most impractical for moving and not helpful at all. Check it out, he proceeds. The shape itself can be defined very straightforwardly. Consider an infinitely long horn, defined by rotating the graph of the function f of x equals 1 divided by x around the x-axis. In this case, we assume the domain of the horn to be the x-axis, where x is greater or equal to 1. This shape is known as Gabriel's horn. Let's look at some of its properties. First, let's investigate the surface area of our horn. Imagine a circle on the surface of our shape, as shown in red. Because we constructed the horn by rotating the function f of x around the x-axis, the radius of the red circle is given by f of x equals 1 divided by x. We can, therefore, calculate the circumference of our red circle as u equals 2 pi r equals 2 pi f of x equals 2 pi divided by x. The overall surface area of our shape can be obtained by adding together all the circumferences of all possible circles. Since this is a continuous shape, there will not be a discrete sum, but an integral. We therefore integrate the circumference u of all possible circles over the complete domain of our shape, meaning from 1 to infinity. By applying the known integral of 1 divided by x being equal to ln of x, we arrive at the solution for the surface a equals 2 pi ln of x. Note here that there is no upper bound for logarithmic functions, hence this integral diverges. Therefore, the surface of this shape has no upper bound and can be considered as being infinite. Now, we want to perform a similar calculation for the volume of Gabriel's horn. Imagine this time not the circumference of a circle obtained by cutting through our shape, but the area of the same circle, as shown in orange. This area small a can be calculated using the formula r squared pi. Since the radius r is given by f of x equals 1 divided by x, the area small a of our orange circle is given by pi divided by x squared. By the same argument as before, the overall volume v can be obtained by integrating these circle areas over the domain of our shape. Using polynomial integration rules, we arrive at the solution v equals pi. Therefore, this integral does converge and gives us a finite solution for the volume. We have found a shape with finite volume and infinite surface area, just as Rex suggested. But before you click away, let us give you one more brain teaser. Imagine Rex, being as artistic as ever, starting to paint the inner surface of our shape. Flocky, having followed the analysis of our horn very closely, makes the seemingly paradoxical observation that Rex cannot color the complete inside of the shape since it has an infinite surface area, he can, however, paint the whole surface by simply filling the complete, finite volume of the shape. In other words, it seems impossible to paint the horn, on the inside or on the outside, using a brush, but it seems possible to paint it at least on the inside by simply filling the complete shape with paint. So, in conclusion, we have found a shape that does not help Flocky at all, but the properties of Gabriel's horn are very interesting nevertheless. Flocky's request for a shape having a finite surface area and infinite volume, Rex concludes, is simply absurd. Such a shape can never exist. Or can it?